All right, let's just jump right in. So first thing you're gonna need, you're gonna need a uh, tool bag to hold all your hand tools in. Uh, and I really like this one made by DeWalt. It's, uh, it's a perfect size, fits everything I need and it's not too big. Uh, second thing, you're gonna need a belt to hold your tool bag on. Um, of course, you could clip this right onto your pocket, I suppose. But anyway, wearing a belt's pretty nice. Uh, this one is from another tool bag. I believe it's a Coonies. Uh, doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, I also like to have a tape measure holster to hold my tape measure. A hammer holster to hold a hammer, which you're definitely going to use on occasion. Um, I also like to keep a little pouch on here for all my morettes and screws and whatever else I might want to put in it. Um, now, you want that. You are definitely going to need screwdrivers. So mine are by Klein, but I mean, there's lots of brands out there that work well. Uh, Klein are pretty good tools and most electricians seem to go with them. Anyway, with flathead, Phillips, a number one green Robertson and a number two red Robertson. Those are definitely your most common screwdriver sizes to use. Uh, all right, so also your linesman pliers, definitely one of the most used tools. Uh, these ones are by Klein. I've had a few different brands, but they work good until you do something like that little hole there, cutting a live wire. Which uh, brings me to this little guy here, little uh, electrical tester. Just tells you when there's uh, power on something, or hopefully does. It didn't in this case when I uh, cut a wire with those. But uh, anyway, uh, assortment of tools. Diagonal cutters, use these. I mainly use these to cut the ground or bond wire inside of a box or in a panel. Uh, you can also use them to pry nails or staples or whatever else out of something. Uh, needle nose pliers, use these all the time. Probably mostly to hold ground wires inside of uh, electrical boxes, but uh, they're quite handy for all sorts of stuff. Uh, wire strippers. Uh, these ones again by Klein, but there's lots of brands out there. I like them. They're spring-loaded. They're easy to hold. I also like them because I can take them out of my tool bag and I always know which direction to hold them because they're curved one way. Easy lock to use. Uh, there's also holes on here for uh, cutting bolt or cutting screws. 6 30 seconds and 8 30 seconds after you cut the screw. When you back the screw out, it re-threads it, so that's quite... And um, there's also holes on here that I always use to bend the tip of my wire to get a perfect little curl. So, now, uh, these ones are awesome. These are wire strippers for number 14 and number 12, but they also have a sheathing stripper to strip the outside of the insulation off of number 14 and number 12 wire. Uh, very handy, will save you a ton of time when you're uh, doing rough in. Uh, they also have the screw cutter holes and the wire bending holes. So I also have a big screwdriver that I don't care about. As you can see, I hit the end of it all the time. It's for prying, for chiseling, for hammering, whatever I need it for. But that way I don't wreck this one as much. You can see I've probably hit it a few times. But, uh, you're going to need a pencil, a marker, um, bits for your uh, for your impact that you're going to be using and uh, whether that's yours or you know your employer supplies it for you uh, you're definitely going to need a tape measure um, I've gone through all sorts but uh, this one I actually really like it it's made by Klein has a huge standout to it uh, has numbers on both sides which is quite handy uh, it also has a conduit bending information on it which is pretty uh, pretty useful when you're getting into bending conduit uh, this is also magnetic so it'll uh, it'll stick to metal wire trays or conduit or whatever type of metal item you want to measure from so that's pretty much it for uh, hand tools the basic ones uh, there are some other tools that you're probably going to need, like a drywall or keyhole saw, actually a flashlight, 
flashlight or headlamp would probably be in the uh, first group of tools, but anyway, there. Uh, you're gonna need stud finder, find studs for cutting holes, uh, obviously a multimeter for uh, testing all your electrical stuff. You're gonna go through, Actually, in that first group of items is probably a level, a torpedo level. That one's a really old, beat up one, but uh, does the trick. I uh, have a plug in tester, which is pretty useful for just quickly testing if things are working properly. Uh, I have a stubby screwdriver, which comes in handy quite often. Now, there's also, let's see. Here's another handy tool, a uh, Klein nut driver. What do we have? Two, four, six sizes on it, it looks like. A uh, quarter inch up to half inch, and you just basically pull that apart, put whatever size on there. It's magnetic. Another kind of nifty thing about this, you can take this off and you can put drill or impact bits in there. So it can also become a screwdriver. Kind of handy. And speaking of impact bits, they're uh, double-ended bits, so when you're using your impact driver, you have your uh, number two Robertson, flip it around, number one Robertson. They're, uh, they're made by Racketeers, so here again, number two Robertson and a Phillips bit. You know, I think I forgot this, so we're gonna have to add this back in. Uh, wire stripping knife or sheathing stripping knife for uh, stripping just the outside sheathing off of uh, off of wire that you're working with, uh, whatever size that might be. I use this for other things too, opening boxes and packaging and all sorts of stuff. So you're also gonna need uh, channel lock pliers and adjustable wrench. Um, I have a whole assortment of smaller screwdrivers in here just for uh, small terminal strips, or, you know, if you're dealing with some sort of electronics or whatever. Um, I have a tap, no, that's not a tapper. I have a uh, tri-tap for re-threading if you happen to strip metal boxes. I know in the US, you guys use more plastic boxes, but uh, in Canada, we use a lot of metal. Uh, so if the screw holes are stripped on it, you can easily re-thread it with this thing. Pretty. Pretty handy, comes in use maybe once every couple months or something. I uh, have another set of wire strippers and uh, these ones also have the sheathing stripper on them. These are, uh, they're pretty handy. They're made by Racketeers. I've, I've used them quite a bit. Not sure about this little uh, crimper. If you put a tube connector and wires through there and you crimp it down, I'm not sure how you get, not sure how you get your pliers back, but anyway. I have another uh, another crimper for that right here. Oh. Uh, another handy tool that I have is Allen keys. These are made by Klein. Uh, so they have all your standard sizes, but then they also have these pieces here, which are uh, 3 8 and half an inch, which you wouldn't get on a normal Allen key set. And they're super handy for working uh, on lugs, in meter sockets or panels or whatever you're working in. And that's pretty much it for hand tools. I'm sure I'm missing some stuff. I have extra knives. I have another wire stripper right here. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for uh, hand tools you might use. And again, I'm sure I'm missing some stuff. Uh, gloves, definitely a handy thing to have. Uh, the other thing that uh, sometimes is considered a hand tool is uh, your impact driver and your drill. Now, some companies might supply those for you, other times you have to buy them. Um, these are awesome, the Milwaukee Fuel. I would have a hard time buying anything other than the Fuel version from Milwaukee. Uh, definitely worth the money, they're just, they're so much more powerful. Um, anyway, that's probably about it. All right.